To be a successful magician, you don't need hocus pocus. What you need is focus. Hello again everyone, I'm Eli's dad with Project Eli where we educate and lead and inspire. Today we're going to focus on focus and being a channel where we not only talk about the what it takes to be successful, we give you the how to, that is our objective today. You know Eli, in many ways focus is like endurance when running a marathon. It's a skill and like any skill it can be built and it can be trained. It's a superpower that you can use to achieve many things in life and as we become more distracted than ever in today's times, being able to focus for long periods of time and produce at a high quality and speed is becoming more valuable than ever before. I was reading an article by a gentleman named Sergey Faldin, F-A-L-D-I-N, which I found to be outstanding. Not that it had anything particularly new in it, but once again, when things come to you from a different angle, a different paradigm, they sometimes your understanding becomes more clear. And we've talked about most of these things that we're going to talk about today, but I'm going to give it to you from his paradigm, which hopefully will be helpful to help you achieve the success that you desire and you deserve. The first thing that he talks about in terms of being successful is a concept called deep work. Now, you know, Eli, I'm old. You know, back when I was playing baseball, we used to say, boy, he throws the ball fast, or he puts the he can spot the ball really well. Today, you have good velocity and good location. Or if you're playing football, when I was a kid, we used to say, hey, go out and get open. Today, what they say is, why don't you go out and create some separation? So my point is that people assign new terms to make something sound more scientific than actually it is and, and you hear this all the time with stuff. Deep work is one of those things. Deep work is a term that's coined by the famous author Cal Newport. In short, it means an extended period of time spent focused on one activity without any distraction. And if you want to get anything done in the world of distraction, trust me, deep work is a must. According to Mr. Newport, there are two core abilities that anybody who wants to thrive in today's economy should master. One, mastering hard things quickly, and two, producing at an elite level of quality and speed. And to do both, you need to be able to work on a single task for long periods of time. Instead of being constantly distracted, you need focus. Deep work is about using directed focus. That is, using all of your brain power to focus on the single task at hand rather than scattered focus which is constantly switching back and forth between tasks. By trying to do so many things at once we're essentially constantly loading and uploading your brain with new context and that diminishes your ability to perform at an elite level. Therefore, to perform at an elite level and get more done and have real directed focus, deep work is the only way that you can move forward. And just like training for a marathon, you can train your mind to concentrate. Here's how you do it. Once again, let's go over the how-to. First of all, set a certain time for it each and every day. Cal Newport suggests doing it doing your deep work first thing in the morning, you know, depending upon your age, what's first thing in the morning? For me, first thing in the morning is like 6 o'clock in the morning. For you, Eli, first thing in the morning is 11 o'clock in the morning. Well, maybe I'm exaggerating a bit. Maybe I start at 6.30. Anyway, that's when your mind is functioning at best. And when you first start, don't worry about it if you can't work for more than a shorter period of time, 20 or 30 minutes, let's say. Because with practice, it's like a muscle, it's like anything else. You're able to extend with practice what your capabilities are, you know, so that you're able to do the deep work for a few hours, but you don't want to do it 
for more than four hours because that's about the length of time that your brain can focus on one thing before it's like your, your Swiss cheese, okay, your scrambled eggs. It's, a, it's important to get rid of all of the distractions. Make deep work a habit and a routine and set a certain time for it every day. But you also want to make sure that you have a shutdown ritual. A shutdown ritual is taking a break during your deep work period. You can't work straight four hours straight. You want to have, have a little bit of a, of a shutdown ritual. But here's a mistake that people make. The mistake that they make is when they have their shutdown ritual, they'll go to, let's say, Facebook or Instagram or some social media thing. And when you do that, you're taking your mind from the laser focus that you had on performing the task at hand and you're moving to a different starting line and your brain needs to stay on track with that first starting line. So when you when you're taking your when you're doing your little shutdown ritual, what you want to do is some something that like shuts down, which might mean I don't know, meditating for a little bit which might mean going for a walk, something like that in nature, you know, something like that, but not something new, just something to shut you down, to regenerate. One of the things, and, and once again, these are, are things that are not brand new. I mean, Bob Anderson with me would say, you know, Eli's dad, this is the time that you take to regenerate. So go sit in that room, be quiet and regenerate and take that take that little time. That regeneration will help you, give you more fuel to continue back on your task when you restart. Have a rule for being distracted. You can't have, get rid of the social media, shut off your phone, shut off the TV, shut off the music, keep yourself focused on the one thing and take care of your body. Right? You know, give yourself enough sleep, give yourself enough exercise, you know, don't be eating 10 tons of junk food, and be smart. I mean, this is not anything that's, you know, super atomic science, this is common sense. And then um, the author says, use the Pomodoro technique. What the heck is the Pomodoro technique? I didn't know what it was, which, all right. It's when you break down a big task into small bursts of focus, followed by rest. Okay, have we talked about that before? You know, you, once again, you hear these phrases, like one of the things Anthony Robbins made, the reticular activation system, as a, you know, it's a science, all right? What, the, what does that mean? That means when you focus on one thing, the things around you tend to relate to that one area of focus. So instead of saying, when you focus on something, the stuff you see around you will contribute to your focus, they have the reticular activation system. All right, this is the Pomodoro technique. What's that? The Pomodoro technique is you break down a task into small chunks. We've talked about that. When you're trying to solve an issue, what you want to do is break it down into small meaningful chunks and solve them one at a time because when you look at uh, a huge objective that you're trying to accomplish it can become very intimidating if you look at it in the big picture oh I got to do this and this and this and this but if you break it down into its smallest components then they become workable and when you're making these small components to make them workable, you want to stretch yourself just a little bit beyond your grasp. All right, so you want to have your reach go a little bit beyond your grasp, just a little bit hard. That's the way that you break things down when you chunk them. All right, when you know, get stuff done. The, here's how, how the Pomodoro objective works. All right, here's how it works. First, you pick a task prepare your environment and you get rid of all the distractions and you work for 25 or 30 minutes 
without any interruption. You take a five minute break as a reward and once again this is not the time to go to your social media this is the time to regenerate to give your brain some rest to allow it to refuel and then repeat the cycle four or five times depending upon the stamina level that you have as far as being an achiever is concerned with your work focus okay with your your work habit and then after that's done take a nice break. And the beautiful thing about this technique is that it takes a big project, breaks it down into small, less scary chunks. It's beneficial because you know exactly how long you're going to be working and you can commit fully to the task during that work window. By giving yourself time frames, you install a degree of certainty to the process. And the brain is most effective, works most effectively when there is a degree of certainty. Your brain functions best with relaxed certainty. That's when you're most productive. So we're talking about a real simple concept here. All right, a real simple concept here is you, you want to have your work product, your work habits set with a certain time frame. You want to eliminate the distractions. Uh, have a shutdown ritual. Have a rule, you know, don't let yourself be distracted by outside influences for that window and take care of your body and chunk things down. And because we will never end a meeting on a philosophical note, why don't you get out there and charge? I'm Eli's dad.